Hey Ubers, Vivian here with a brand new video that I've named Finger Misting. Are you titillated? <laughs> um, I'm going to be using brand new Hampton Art stamps that are co-branded with Authentique. Hampton Art is now working with Authentique. And I'm also going to be using Smooch Spritzes from ClearSnap. So let's start with the tutorial. It's really fun. There's so many different ways you can reinvent this technique. I'm using some watermark ink from Clear Snap. It's a very sticky, clear ink. And I'm just stamping this dandelion bloom that comes in one of the new stamp sets from Hampton Art and Authentique. It's my I would say, yeah, I think it's my favorite from the new stamps co-branded between Hampton Art and Authentic, just because it's so eye-catching. Uh, and there's a lot of detail. So you'll see, you can't really see quite yet, but I'm stamping it on a four-inch square of watercolor paper. I'm finding that the watercolor has been holding up better for me, watercolor paper, than regular cardstock just because I've been using so much media and applying a lot of media on there. And so because I've got such a sticky ink, the clear embossing powder from Hampton Art is called A La Mode, and I've seen it at the major craft stores. It adheres to it very well. And then I set my heat tool on it. I don't know if you noticed, but before I did any stamping at all, I ran a little pillow, little anti-static pillow over my 4x4 four four square of watercolor paper just so that the embossing powder didn't stick anywhere I didn't want it to. This is a smooch spritz in a beautiful bright yellow. It's called Citrus Tickle and it's also got some shimmer in there and I just heavily doused the center of my uh, card front with it. And I'm going to do the same with this beautiful bright pink called Pink Sprinkles. Put that all over there. And then this, I'm almost out of it because I've used it all up. I need to reorder some more. Um, this is called Sea Kiss. And it's another smooch spritz. Now, I don't know if you're aware, these are our primary colors. And I've been working with a lot of color recently. And what I'm interested in creating is that mix of primary colors where yellow and red makes orange and yellow and blue makes green. And it's already happening in the top left corner. The red and the blue make purple. And I just love how those that happens on the card front. <laughs> um, I do that a lot with my watercolors also. I thought I'd try it out with my smooch spritzes and it works beautifully. And before that stuff dries, you can spritz water on there if there are any areas that you want to lighten up and dilute. So that's what I did. And as you can see, the places that I heat embossed with that beautiful dandelion bloom are resisting the, the, the mists. And so this is what I'm calling finger misting. It's not quite finger painting. It's not quite misting. It's something in the middle. And I just let that dry naturally. I did not set my heat tool on it for this project. I'll show you what happens when you actually do set your heat tool on it. Uh, because I did not set my heat tool on it, that mist did not burn into my heat embossed areas and I was able to wipe it away using a baby wipe. Uh, you can also use a paper towel or a tissue. And that way I'm very uh, clearly revealing all the details in that stamp and going back to the pure white of my watercolor paper. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that mixing that happens right on the paper. I didn't have to do that really. It just happened naturally. I'm going to uh, use some black pigment ink from Clear Snap with a sentiment that also comes from the new release between Hampton Art and Authentique. I'm going to stamp that on an area that is minimally heat embossed. The reason I did it this way is because there are parts of the sentiment that made contact with my heat embossed areas. 
and I just want to make sure they're permanent. You could have used also a permanent dye, permanent ink, instead of going through this step, but I had this readily available. So I'm sprinkling my uh, clear embossing powder on top, and then heat embossing that as well. So I'm sure that that will be permanent and that ink won't go anywhere. I've been working with a lot of color recently. So I found that in order to allow those colorful backgrounds to be the star of the show, uh, I've, I've been keeping my embellishments simple and quiet. Um, I really love this white seam binding from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I'm crushing it up. It's a, it's, um, for the seam binding in the shop, this one's a little bit stiffer than the rest. So, um, I mean, it's still really pliable and easy to make bows with. But um, I thought I'd go with that stiffness and um, crush it up and create a little bit of uh, fun tech, funky, fun texture uh, that isn't distracting from the rest of my project. So you could um, crush it up and then tie it up with some twine and keep, leave it that way for a little while to get those wrinkles to set. Um, you could also wrap it with an elastic band and let it set. Um, I wet it, crushed it, wet it, and then lightly set a heat tool on it to get that, to get those folds to stay. And just affixed it to my card front and then added in a beautiful funky bow uh, right next to my sentiment. And while I have a second, while I'm making this bow, I just want to share with you how I feel about colors. If you're just at the beginning of collecting mists and pigments, um, of course you'll know which colors are your favorites. But I think, um, and if you're on a budget, it's really great to invest in primaries. Because as you can see with this project, with the primaries you can create all the secondaries as well. So with red, yellow, and blue you can also create orange, green, and purple. And I love just allowing that to happen. Um, spontaneously when you throw all those colors down on your project. And I just set it on a four and a quarter inch square card front. And I also uh, set some glue dots underneath select places of my bow to keep the bow in that sort of funky architectural arrangement. And you can see the shimmer from the mists and the shimmer from the heat embossing and all those beautiful places where colors mixed on your page. So you helped that along by running your finger all over the card front. And yes, it is a little bit messy, but it's really fun. So I hope you'll give it a try. I'm going to share with you in just a second some stills of this project. really happy. Uh, so I think this card, especially the sentiment, that's a really great sentiment because you could use it for just a hello, uh, for a birthday, for a wide variety of situations. If someone's down in the dumps just to cheer them up, I think the colors themselves make for a very, very cheery project. And here you can see where it mixed wet and where it also mixed dry. So that dry mixing is a little bit more pronounced. The wet mixing is a lot more atmospheric. And can you see here why I love that stamp so much? Ooh, love it. And here's a close up of the seam binding, the white seam binding from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I love it. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm, I'm probably going to use that one all up. I wanted to share with you another sample that I did prior to making this video. Uh, I used the exact same stamps and colors, but uh, I went. it ended up being a much more distressed, grungy type of look. And this was just from setting my heat tool on it prior to wiping off the mists from my heat embossed areas. I also threw some salt, kosher salt on top, and you've seen me do that before in recent videos with watercolor paper and watercolors. I just wanted to see how it would react with this medium. 
And as you can see, there are some areas that look crystallized uh, with a little bit of extra texture and concentrated color. And there are also areas that are significantly lighter because there were several pellets of salt in one area that I wiped away before the media had completely dried. And then I had these areas that were significantly lighter. So it definitely lends to a grungy type of effect when you, when you do it that way. I just wanted to show you a few other ways you can use this finger misting technique. I heat embossed another with another stamp that comes with the new release from Authentique and Hampton Art. It's a really delicate floral pattern and I just stamped it um, all up and down the center of my card front. And you can just use one color and just draw that finger, spritz it a lot, and then draw your finger across the card front in whatever pattern pleases you. I also added blue, so you could use two colors. I really love the purple that results. This was actually, I had run out of my sea kiss, so I actually used a darker, more indigoish blue color from the Smooch Spritz, and that was called Splash. And as you can see, you could lighten that up if you wanted to by spritzing water and then drawing your finger across again. I'm going to lighten it up even more. And this is all a very fast thing, so you've just got to have fun and go for it. If you wait too long, the color's going to set. But you can see that one brush of my finger across the top lightened that up significantly. And here's that final effect. So these stamps are so detailed, and they're not... As you know, I'm not so much of a colorer. These are stamps in which the images are already solid, solid images. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't color these, and I love those. Solid images with lots of detail. OK, here's another one I did with that dandelion seed head. And I stamped that all over. This is another thing you can do. So heat emboss again. This effect is going to be much more bold and funky. There's not going to be much mixing of colors. So I poured the citrus tickle on there and just started messing around, um, drawing the color across my project in whatever way pleased me and however I was feeling in the moment. Now I'm spritzing some of that splash on top and I'm not going to mix. So on the dry areas, you'll have the traditional spritzed look. And in the areas that are still wet, it'll move around a little bit on there. And then we're just going to doodle, basically, with our fingers. So I doodled with the, the splash. And because that yellow area is still wet, we it turns to green, which is just so fun. And um, then I thought, oh gosh, you know, I still want to play some more and add in that third primary. Uh, so I took the, the pink sprinkles and I just rubbed it all over my finger and put some fingerprinting on there. So for this project, prior to wiping with a baby wipe, prior to wiping, I heat set. I heat set with my heat tool, which is not a blow dryer, by the way. It's a heat tool you can get at a craft supply store. It's very hot, and the stream of air is softer, so it's not going to blow your stuff around. And then I, I started wiping. Um, so more of the pigment from your mists is going to burn into the heat embossed areas. So when you wipe the pigments away from your heat embossed areas, more stays put and it's a little bit more of a subtle look. I figured since the rest of the project was so bold, I wanted to do it that way. And then in the end, I missed it a little bit more. Once everything was dry, I missed it a little bit more with this pink sprinkles and uh, ended up with this funky final effect. So I hope you enjoyed my finger misting video, and I hope I've inspired you to just play around and let go a little bit and see what you come up with. I'd love for you to share with me 
any projects you, you, that you do with this finger misting technique. You can find me at my blog, contadinak.wordpress.com. You can comment there, give me links. You can post your projects on my public Facebook page. And I will provide all of those links in the description box under the video. Thanks so much, and see you guys next time. Bye.